Nice. So last, I mean, so, so last week we met, we've been, we had, um, due to traveling and stuff, there was a few weeks where we didn't, we didn't meet. So last time, one of the things we did was right at the end is we went over um, the video of our last session, right? In that last one, and it was on virtue. And this, that was the one where we talked about this kind of sense of in aspirational and the aspirational sense of virtue, right? The, the metaphor that Sandra came up with and then, and then Daniel clothed it basically was, was the sense that virtues being something like the garment and, and that there's a nakedness that we have to the good, right? But that, that nakedness and that sheer shining of the good and that claim of the good on us, right? Is it's too much, right, to bear. To begin to bear it, each virtue is something like a, a, clo a clothing or a garment, right? Which, which I just listened to it again this morning, um, that last part, which, which was really linked to this sense of, and I really liked that, really liked this as a grounding point in understanding it, is like, how does someone go from not, not, understanding or being able to hear music, right? To somebody who deeply understands and appreciates music, right? There's virtue in there, right? And that, and that there's this, in order to understand music, we could say that there's this, you have to get the, the distinctions, right? So if you don't, if, if, the, if the patterns, right, aren't distinct for you, you can't experience them. So how do you go from not being able to experience them and have them, right, to be able to experience them and have them? Something about that virtue operates in that, in that manner, that kind of, Verveke says, um, talks about proproleptic, is it is that the right word? Proleptic rationality. rationality. Yeah. Yeah. Proleptic rationality. Mm -hmm. um, in in that sense of, in that sense that you become someone, right? In this kind of sense of garments, right? Putting on garments, which is in nakedness, right? And mm -hmm. clothed. Right? This it was just so rich in that sense. Mm -hmm. and, and then, um, and then Daniel, when you got back from, one of the things I think you mentioned actually, uh, when we were talking is that when you got back from seeing Evo and spending the day with Evo de Janeiro, and he talked about um, the diff, if you can go over those words again, the difference between where he was coming from with, in terms of, um, in terms of the principle, right? Not aspiration, but memory. Yes, so <clears throat> he contrasted anagoge, and, which is aspiration, and mm -hmm. anamnesis. Um, both, both of these things are found in Plato. And he said to us that for him, it's just remembering the principle. This has to do with kind of like our earliest memories. Yeah. Something we kind of know as, the, as, as children, we have that, that native belongingness, as he would perhaps say in principles of philosophy, that nearness to the principle. It's a kind of, we, we, we are, as, as children, we are constantly alert to that. We, 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 that that's why, for example, Heraclitus or Nietzsche um, evoked the, the, the image of a child for the highest mode of being. Nietzsche, for example, has this model. So like in, in, in the Zarathustra, he lays this out and in the last stages. So see, we become like children again. We, we learn to play again. 
And that's the, that's the highest mode of being. That's perhaps the highest possible participation with the principle with being itself that's that's possible so it's 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 just it's just memory then we would have to perhaps ask okay when i when i first you know um, i listen let's say let's stay with the music example i listen to a wonderful piece of music and i get a, a sense for the principle which i've forgotten um and with heidegger we would say we have all forgotten them right? the, the oblivion of being the, the famous one um then how can we just continually remember that and then i would say still that something like virtues are necessary because they afford us this this process of memorizing 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 yeah um we remember and we memorize right mm. it's it's funny in in german the word remember also means something like um en innering if i would translate it very literally en innering so it, en innering like <laughs> it's it means really to 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 in this in kind of there's an internalization there's something that goes on within you mm-hmm. that that you and you 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 are in innering mm-hmm. that whatever it is um yeah. so the, the german has a really means inner means there's really innering is I, I don't know if this is an english verb or so but it has this to 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 in, in, interiorize something mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's on that. Yeah. yeah, and and I'm seeing remembering as like we we become fractionated, we become fractured by experience in life, and re mm. remembering as members of ourselves, or you know pieces of ourselves that are now reintegrating re- yeah. in, 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 maybe in a in a more um, uh, sophisticated uh, organization as well you know? mm. yeah mm-hmm. there's uh, there's yeah that's one of the things I wanted to kind of in in doing this today, I wanted to explore more of like, because if we start to think about, think aspiration, not as, I mean, think virtue, not as aspiration, but as memory, mm. right? And wh- I know that being a Heideggerian, um, Evo's, you know, Evo would pro- I think Evo would probably say, so Heidegger would probably say, if you go with aspiration, you, you fall in that, that metaphysical tendency to have everything come to this point. Mm-hmm. Exa- right? Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly this. You, you, you aspire towards this point and then you go back and then you have the metaphysical scheme. Yeah, yeah. And then there's something, there's another way that that can be revealed or talked about, right? So memory is just inter- it's interesting to think that, well, this is, it's also very, I mean, that's, this is, Plato has all that stuff about, about, about knowledge being, being recollection and, and remembering. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, the good, I mean, that's in some sense, that's so much of what the grappling, the, the, the dialogues are so much about is this, quagmire with good that 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 you can't you can't not presuppose it so in some sense you can't ever get out get it out in front of you in some clear way mm-hmm. you, you you can't it's like um in some sense it's you can't shake the memory of it or something right uh like any move that you make already presupposes right the good or 
or something like that. So it's got this deep claim on us. Hmm. Um, and so in some sense, like, you know, the platonically, it's like the process of coming to know the forms, the eidos, right, is a re recollection, right? And I think that's really does, it insights for me feel like that, right? Like it's, it's the same feeling of like when I have an insight, it's, it's the same experience, it's the same thing when I've lost something is like the moment I found it. Mm -hmm. Like if I, oh yeah, I fucking put my keys over here. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, that, ah, that opening phenomenologically, experientially for me feels exactly the same thing is mm -hmm. memory mm -hmm. um so so one of the things i'd like to do today is just kind of it, in some sense explore virtue make propositions about virtue but really look at thinking it thinking it from memory in this way So do you have a proposal, Guy? I think I think I I think I do. Let's let's find out. Let's see. All right. So I was in the last one. Yeah, Daniel was the last one. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So I'll propose. Um, you want to reduce, Daniel? Sure. Oh. And then you want to describe? Thunder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll set the timer. And actually, I'd like to just take, let's just take another couple of minutes just to sit in silence. Mm -hmm. I'll pause the recording. Yeah. Just did. Right. Oh. Can you, did you have a, you had a question for me, right? No, Sandra just asked what, what you think is uh, virtue and Remember oh, yeah, the yeah. Daniel, Daniel, just ask him. Ask him to tell me what virtue is. Or something. <laughs> hey, good guy. What is what is virtue? I propose that virtue is <clears throat> a hermeneutical circular recollection of native endowment of the good. Hmm. Virtue is a hermeneutical circular recollection of the native endowment of the good. Sounds good for you? Yeah. Yeah. So in what way is it hermeneutical and circular? Yeah. In this in this way that 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 way that the good uh, you is always presupposed. Like you can't not presuppose it, right? The mo like the moment I take any kind of action or have a thought or, or something, I am enacting, demonstrating, inhabiting, being and intelligibility, right? Like we say that the good is like a, a, 
I heard John call it the pro the good is like the promissory note <laughs> of of that being is intelligible. Um, and so it's hermeneutic in the sense that the virtue, uh, I take a step, I take a step, um, that step is actually, that, that step in virtue is, is itself in some sense, the beginning of the virtue. But as I keep stepping forward, right, the, um, here's the hermeneutic circle, circular part of it, the circle part of it is, is that as the, it, as it comes back around, right, it actually, in these ways, updates and confirms my understanding of the virtue, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in the act of, of that, there's that, so there's the act of like it coming around, in some sense, getting a deeper cut, getting confirmation, getting um, something about the more is revealed about the virtue, right? That then becomes, in some sense, historical. Right, and that his, historicity, right, mm -hmm. is where I'm kind of like walking from, but I'm also walking towards it. And that's why it's a recollection, right, in some sense. I mean, that's how I want to play with it here, I think. Okay, <clears throat> so vir virtue has to do something or is even that movement that you just yeah. tried to describe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, coming from historicity towards me <laughs> but it is a it is a it is a recollection of something that that comes towards yeah. me um, yeah yeah okay so now i understand that part a little bit better in in what sense um are we natively endowed this perhaps how can we recollect how can we realize this native endowment yeah. yeah well i think it's in some sense you can't propositionally but if we say that that hermeneutical circling around right mm -hmm is this movement, right, it, it, it's, it's embodied, mm -hmm. right? I think in some sense you, it's, it's not just, it's not definitely not just intellectual understanding um, the good or having propositions about it. Um, it's in some sense, uh, because you, in some sense, become the good, right? You become in, it, it, it starts to, it starts to animate your personhood, right? So, and, and there's something about, this is why it's connected to wisdom, right? Because it's like, you can't, it's a, it's a, it's a comprehension of the good that isn't, isn't, um, it isn't, you can't, uh, you can't grasp it and hold on to it and have it, right? Mm -hmm. It is, it's the process of walking in these spirals, right? It's this kind of letting go, right? It coming back, mm -hmm. right? It, in this, it, it, and, and that's, I think, where it has to do with this, this knowledge and it is particularly wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's always incomplete and there's nothing final about it. Yet it's I can't I can't not live it I cannot presuppose it in my very step in the very step I'm taking right. So there's this process going on, and I think you said that well. This we are always in that process. Yeah, even now. 
and we, we are so right we're natively endowed to that process so we are open to it we can participate in it yeah. Yeah. Um, we can realize that yeah um When I when I when I get aware of this, um, how does it feel? How does it feel? Yeah. What's uh, the what is the embodied sense when you? Uh -huh. It's um there's a it, there's a kind of there's a it's it feels uh well it feels a lot of different ways but in fact it feels all the ways that you can feel but I want to say that the the experience or feeling has to do with this this um this paradoxical is how it feels right so i don't think it's an accident that we want to say right and in, in the closed because as you're walking in some sense you're like you're you're in garmenting right mm. but you're also right? Losing garments, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You realize the unfittedness for this particular way of understanding or way of orienting, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the thing that was virtuous last week is, is, is that very same thing is opposite of virtue like uh, this week, mm -hmm. right? And that somehow so it's like you lose clothes and you bring on clothes. There's a, it's, it's paradoxical. And I think there's something important going on in this ambiguity in the word reveal, right? Mm -hmm. There's something really important in that ambiguity, right? In that sense that to, you know, reveal it's, it could mean to veil again, right? But it also reveals, it also unveils. Yeah. yeah. So there's this, there's this kind of both those movements are going on, right? In, hmm. right? Hmm. Uh, as the virtue unfolds or the virtues come together, right? And unfold and inform and withdrawal that as as i'm as it's unconcealing and it is it's becoming clear to me right there's also a way where it's on one level it's revealing but in these ways that i probably don't understand yet right it's also concealing right um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that revealing concealing, that completeness in incompletion, that paradoxical, that absolute ambiguity. Um, as I think in some level is deeply, it's like, well, one, it's deeply revealing of being and the good, right? In itself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, did I set the timer? Oh, no. I think it feels like we, we, we are time. Yeah, I think it's probably 10 minutes. Um, okay, but I, will, I will directly go into appreciation, if that's okay. Um, so your initial, or maybe I'll ask this before, your initial proposal was virtue as a hermeneutical circular recollection of the native endowment of the good. How does that sound? No. 
sounds good to me that still holds true i think i think it also sounds good and i think um, even in that the everything you brought up um that strengthens your proposal um so there is i will appreciate this um <laughs> i mean you you were really this was like a, a crash course in some heideggerian philosophy what you just did kind of about the he talks about the strife of revealing and concealing that was already is there even in the world aletheia and truth what was true for the greeks um and it was even great to kind of see your your body or your hands at least really moving in that tension it's very yeah. it's very primordial tension that the human being is in um okay there is there's a sense of mystery um and it has to do with forgetting i think so we are always in this hermeneutical process but And for Heidegger, it's in some sense, today we have completely forgotten about this dimension, you know, this the invisible, inaudible dimension. Complete for forgetfulness about it. Okay. Um, so, you added this, you know, this element of losing clothes and getting clothed when we enter into this so we start we start we, we get we get we get aware of this process this, this is going on this hermeneutical process and there is this this there is this what there's this likelihood of unlikelihood that we could completely forget about the process so just we don't we, we don't see it we don't recognize it we don't remember it that that is unvirtuous let's say that is unvirtuous um virtue is then kind of attaining fitness within that path that goes on there something like that um that's that's virtuous i i i attain a kind of fitness firmness so i can hold myself in that that movement yeah. um and perhaps that's my proposal even <laughs> all right i'll subscribe okay you know, so Daniel, mm -hmm. what is virtue? Virtue? Do you have to do something to write, Guy? Um, let me grab it real quick. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll wait. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Great. So I said virtue is the peculiar fitness <laughs> and perhaps even the I will not say that it's, it's the peculiar fitness that allows us to hold ourselves in the hermeneutical circular movement of re recollection. Let's say qua forgetting. 
So it's a, it's, it's, it can be both. We can, we can be completely unaware of what's going on. It can be in complete denial. <laughs> that's, that's unfortunately also what, what, um, that's one, that's this, that would be, this really important that uh, it, because even if, even if we realize that we are in denial, then that's like the first step towards recollecting um, realization. Oh, I have forgotten about all of this. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the, the initial awakening, I guess. Mm -hmm. So virtue is the pecu peculiar uh, fitness, is that right? Yeah. Fitness by which or through which we can um, move in our human hermeneutical circular recollection qua forgetting of the good or forgetting mm. qua recollection of the good. Is that essentially what it is? Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I tried with that qua, I just tried to combine that, that contradictory ambiguous yeah, yeah. paradoxical yeah. dimension guy worked out yeah. so well yeah. Um, yeah and is it is it it's qua because forgetting means that there's a knowing at some level if it, it, it's forgetting rather than complete ignorance of it's forgetting meaning at some level i knew but i just forgot yes um Forgetting as forgetting, perhaps. If I if I if I realize the forgetting as the forgetting, I can really acknowledge. It. Oh, I've really, really forgotten that. I, I've really, I've, I'm really in denial. Mm -hmm. That's like the first step towards towards virtuosity or healing. Right. right. Um, now, Daniel, I'm curious about what is peculiar about the fitness um that's it's peculiar because it allows us it's of course not not fitness as we usually understand mm -hmm. it but it's a kind of i'm just, I'm just you know it's a kind just a way of you know Perhaps in, in my in my in my how I imagine it is putting on garments is perhaps a very passive act. Um, I'm just putting on the garments. While when I when I'm having the fitness, it's it's more alert, it's more active. Um, mm -hmm. it comes more from from really the body and the mind in their aligned participation with the good um that and that fitness even then then i know okay now i have to let that garment perhaps mm -hmm. fall away and now i have to put on a new one so it even tells me even it 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 gives me the optimal grip so i know exactly right in the moment what virtue is is mm -hmm. necessary What's the right virtue? What's the right comportment for the for the moment? Mm -hmm. It gives me a kind of flexibility, so right. I can really hold myself in that that mm -hmm. constant tension. Um, so when you describe the difference between putting on the garment and and developing the fitness, you you went from sort of a a passive like you know receiving or putting mm -hmm. on some clothing but now you're energized you're active you're you're involved you're participating in mm. the, I, I guess you're, yeah. you are it mm. 
I guess I would like to, to highlight a kind of skillfulness, um, mm -hmm. even in the putting on the garments and perhaps letting the garments go. The image I had was kimono wearing, because kimono wearing is extremely difficult to learn. It takes often, it takes, it takes kimono, kimono like the, the, you know, these Japanese, these traditional clothes that you, you wear for like marriage ceremonies or like oh. tea ceremony, it takes, they, they have a kind of own, that they, they have to practice this. Mm -hmm. It's not like a t-shirt that you put on like in, in yeah. one second but it's like kimono wearing it, it takes really skill it takes like oh i have an image in my mind you know when when a child learns how to to um, bind the shoelaces together yeah. that's really difficult and that's that's you know that for a child and that really takes some some skillfulness i, I would say that is present in the let's say in the art of wearing a kimono mm -hmm. as well it's, re it's really difficult you have a lot of you know you're, you have the you have a lot of um what's that um, um i don't know the word um what you have like garters and belts and you have a lot of you have, you have a lot, lot of different elements that fit together and it takes hours it can take hours to take on just the kimono to, to have mm -hmm. for ready um so that's and it's kind of, an art it's an art it's an art well. yeah yeah i think i think traditionally we perhaps had a, had a better sense for this you know when um even you know when everything was an art form you know clothing mm. was an art form in back in tea the day. ceremony was an art form yeah mm. even tea yeah 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 I mean, and, and everything right was ritualized, you know, when, when we, we gathered together to have a meal, there were all sorts of rituals enacted, which perhaps also point us toward that peculiar fitness that um, I, I have in mind. Um, everything's very easy today, easy going, and, and perhaps we forget about that. Um, of course, when you're talking about taking it off, you're talking about unveiling things. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, virtue is really um, holding on and having the fitness to hold on in that strife, you know, that ambiguity that you described, Guy. Um, that, that I think is, that I think is, virtue so virtue is the attainment is it well is attaining fitness with the and fitness in i would and and maybe uh, I, commitment commitment to the path yeah yeah I, I just wanted to perhaps stress the dynamic quality of even even let's say even if i have my 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 garderobe of my wardrobe of all the garments of the virtue i need a kind of again a pecu peculiar fitness so i know oh that day i have to wear this and perhaps oh in that situation i have to wear this one so it's I, and I, I know exactly how to put them on and, and you know and uh, now i don't need this so i put it back and so mm -hmm. I take a new one and there's a this is a really dynamic kind of um, um, fitness so we can maneuver through that hermeneutical process that is always creating an ambiguity So I'm, I'm seeing it as a very uh, individual, individual uh, participation in the, the universal aspects, because there is, you know, as you're, as you're 
choosing and putting on and taking off that 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 there's a, a highly individualized path or route that you are following commit with commitment um it's ritualized but but it's not um sort of you know you're not turning off your you're not going through the motions you're actually participating as your momentary experience unfolds mm -hmm. so that there there's a there's a, a the peculiar part is peculiar to each individual who's practicing this you mm -hmm. right yes um, am i getting that right to, that's to the peculiar part to, it's to, not to. odd it's it, it's it's peculiar to you it's individual to you yes yeah. yeah yeah and it's a it's a it's a circular movement of of taking off putting on concealing revealing and moving with this circular hermeneutical mm -hmm. um so it's it's a it's a individual participation through the peculiar aspects of your development of virtue in that in yes that and also and also kind of the peculiar you know the peculiar s state of my development where yeah. i am in all of that yeah. how much i am able to bear yeah but also in a sense the peculiar the, the, the uniqueness of each moment mm -hmm. because sometimes right sometimes you're you're when, when you when you're on mushrooms you have like <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have a you have a massive disclosure mm -hmm. um and perhaps when you're addicted it just did that dimension yeah. shrinks so it's 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 and, and sometimes you revealed a lot sometimes you revealed nothing so it's mm -hmm. um being itself how it comes towards us is al also always different so mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. sense there's also a un un uniqueness to each moment in time so there's no rule book no there's no rule there's book. no guidebook <laughs> yeah yeah and what's virtuous one day is not the next according to the conditions so yeah and uh, the, so it's yeah. this play it's this sort of play the the peculiar play that you are engaging in 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 this in this playing with the re, the, the the reality of the good yeah yeah um Perhaps I, can, I think I can share this. Um, Evo told us that the only teacher we have, so there's no guidebook, but the only teacher we have is the inception itself. So that that movement of coming toward us, that is the only teacher we have. Mm -hmm. The inception tells you when you when you learn to listen to it, it tells you right, it tells you what you have to do. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. I mean, it's with Heraclitus, right? Don't listen to me. Mm -hmm. listen to the logos <laughs> and if you listen to the logos the logos tell well, the inception tells you exactly what you need to follow mm -hmm. um, and so and so as you're saying that too daniel the, the word fitness is is a sort of flexibility it's freedom of movement it's complete freedom to respond appropriately to yeah. whatever yeah. It, it is yeah. coming at you yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, that, that, yeah. that's why fitness is better than, than sort of the, the static image of a garment that you put on that, you know, you can also hide behind, by the way. Mm. Perhaps I, I don't know why I like fitness, but even when I have the image of like, you know, even when you do fitness, you know, you also know how to clothe. When you, when you run a marathon in the winter, you know, you know, you have to take on garments that right, are fit to this situation mm -hmm. when you run a, and when you i don't know go hiking in the summer you, you have to take on different garments so you know exactly what to what to take with you where are and you and that's the dynamic as you mm. said the dynamic inter the, the process of yeah of that ongoing 
interaction so, with the inception that yeah. mm. Do you want to go to appreciation? So, yeah, what I what I appreciated was the the the, the kind of uh, movement into a dynamic uh, um, quality of this of, of of what Daniel was pointing to. I was I was thinking kind of before about virtue is something that that we practice or that we develop but but Daniel's moved it now into something that is more of a of a of well I, I use the word play but it, it not not in terms of playing around but 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 actual encountering of the reality with flexibility openness all those things that 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 our developing our fitness um uh allows us to engage in more fully so when we were talking about when we were talking earlier about you know needing the cloaks of virtue in order to count encounter reality because we are too naked it would it would you know uh, disassemble us now we're talking more about a participation in developing yeah. uh, fitness within ourselves. We don't need external garments. We are ourselves are enough if we are developing that flexibility and, and fitness, that dynamic quality. We have what already what we need. We just need to uh, um, optimize optimize our fitness mm -hmm. that's what I appreciate it, it sort of gives me a sense of we don't need anything we already have it we just need to develop our you know yeah, our, fitness and fitness and memory is interesting and memory. Yeah. so it's already there and fitness and helps us to actualize the, yeah. the, the memory that's mm -hmm. Is always present. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sandra. This was a good turn. Mm -hmm. And so the Sandra. Yeah. yeah. What is is it time? For what you is to... virtue? Uh, can I just do an appreciate? Well, I did appreciation, but can I do the mystery? So yeah. at where it's where it's pointing me now. Um, yeah, it, it's moved me now into this interchange between what I call me and what I call reality, you know, and uh, that inception as, as the inception is presenting or in, uh, uh, encountering me, like, so and we had touched on this before in the last week about is is virtue something that i'm putting it in my words is virtue something that i develop or is virtue something that inhabits me and works itself into existence through me that you know that is so is there a is there actually is there actually a boundary between me and virtue? And so the mystery of that is who is, who or what is acting? Who, who or what is, is enacting and acting? So I would propose something like, what is virtue? Yeah, what is virtue? Virtue is simply an enactment of the good out of its Uh, um, 
expansive, expansive fullness. Something like that. Virtue is the good enacting its fullness in the world, in reality. Virtue is the good enacting its fullness through it, it, through in, in reality yeah through reality so so there's actually there's two two that you gave i just want to I'll, I'll read both of them first one mm -hmm. was Virtue is an enactment of the good out of its expansive fullness. Mm -hmm. The second one was virtue is the good mm -hmm. enacting its its fullness through reality. Yeah. Virtue is the good enacting its fullness through reality. Yeah, I prefer that one. It, 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 it gives a more dynamic, creative uh, yeah. thrust to the, um, to the proposal. Yeah. And is it for you answering the question that you had right at the end there with in relationship to Daniel's proposal about, about what was that question that you had asked? Um, was something like who is who is i have written it down so you you asked sandra um, who or what is in acting is mm -hmm. it me or is it the virtue itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and before that yeah you and i uh, yeah, yeah i would i would propose that <laughs> it's it's the good itself through its cre it's the creative action of the good itself that's yeah. what i would propose right virtue i don't is, consider myself to be the center of the universe yeah yeah because clearly i am right? oh i see <laughs> i sensed that guy i've sensed that all along <laughs> <laughs> um Choose the good, enacting its fullness through reality, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I would say in and through reality, too. In and through, because um, there is a containment and there is also a, a full-on creative participation in, uh, of, of, yeah, that, 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 that creates reality. Yeah. It's both a container and the creation of reality. Yeah. yeah. So there's a contain a container and creation of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the and the container and creation of is so on one level you're saying there's a dynamic of like the virtue can be the container and the process thus contained. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. When virtue, if we kind of take this from perhaps being maybe good, maybe good to use our, our, go back to our person who doesn't know anything about music. Doesn't know and anything about what? Music. Oh, right? music. Yeah, right. So yeah. That, wow. that, that metaphor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We look at this and we say, so. And then within, I don't know, two, three years, they are now, uh, they wrote a book on appreciating music, let's say. Mm -hmm. And that first concert, they were bored and couldn't understand why anyone would even like pay attention to it. And now they're through virtue in some mysterious way that you're gonna reveal to us, right? They're like the top author, best-selling author of how to listen to music. So how would they move from there? Yeah, and we, what you're saying is that if virtue does that, virtue does it um, because it's the good 
enacting itself or enacting its fullness in and through reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in that in that in that picture that you're painting, the way the way it enacts itself is in the conditions under which that person is brought into the fullness of their musical uh, um, capability. The conditions are present, are present. That, that's the good enacting itself. It, it provides the conditions so that the person's native musicality finds opportunities for full development. Okay, got you. And would the conditions, I guess what's mysterious to me about this is this kind of, how does the person go from not understanding music, right? There's that part, but also not being attracted to music to wanting to want to be attracted to music, right? Are the conditions, in, in, in what way is virtue the container in that moment, right? Well, all, I'm, all I can think of, Guy, is that I think there is a kind of musician who is not a native, and uh, there's a kind of musician who is almost forced into um, being a musical performer um, by the conditions under which that, I'm talking sort of personally here, the conditions under which that happens are that, are that, the, the, are that something other than native appreciation of music is connected into some kind of striving for perfection. So rather than, rather than the, the musicality being made virtuous, it's something other than that. It's, it's a, a, you know, a need for recognition, a need for, you know, a need for showing oneself to be perfect or something like that. Yeah. So that that's a false kind of that I think I think virtuosity, musical mu musical virtuosity can be achieved, but it's not the the pure uh, virtue of musicality that is developed. I don't know if that if that's answering your question, but I think there, there can be a sort of false virtue that people can yeah. put. Yeah, so there could be, so what you're saying is um, the containment or the condition, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. or the process of virtue can actually, without us necessarily, on the surface can look like it's virtue, but yeah. it's a false virtue, Yeah. right? Yeah. Or it's, if it's at least it's a different virtue. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a virtue of a different kind other than the pure musicality. Yeah. Of the, the, yeah. 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 Totally. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, in that sense, there you're saying there's a there's a there's a way, let's say, for example, little um little Sandra shows <laughs> up and she's got she's got a sense that Oh, that's time. Well, I was just gonna say, so she's got a sense that there's um that perfection is where it's at, and yeah. she's got to be perfect. Yeah. Right. And the only and the only way that she can prove her perfection is through yeah. a, you know musical virtuosity. Yeah. So that's so that ends up being kind of a means to that end of achieving a certain kind of perfection, right? Yeah. yeah. In that way. But it's not, it's not a pure 
kind of native flowering of her innate musicality yeah. in its in its real uh, fullness and um and joy and joy yeah. yeah well it feels like that just opened up a whole false virtue right yeah so yeah that seems just opened that's up interesting a whole that's interesting isn't it because because i'm i would suspect that's really not just one case i think there are Oh, Maybe yeah. cases where that can happen, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah totally, totally. You yeah. have to you need to know. Well, as John says, though, all that, whatever helps us to adapt can also lead us into self-delusion. Yep, yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So virtue is, there's, there's more to it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this is what we pick up on next time. Yeah. Uh huh. What is false virtue or something? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Eh? So I'm gonna go into appreciation. Mm -hmm. So actually, so this is so I'll, I'll just read off this again. So virtue is the good you're proposing. Mm -hmm. Virtue is the good, enacting its fullness in and through reality. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying that, even when we say there is false virtue, that's still an enactment of the good. Yeah. Right? That's, yeah, totally. And that's the way the good is always presupposing everything. That's the yeah. way, that's why we can't make the good an object, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In some sense, yeah. because it's always, even in our self, our deception. Yeah. Right? Even it's, then, yeah. Yeah because on some level i have an attraction towards something that ultimately is virtuous right mm -hmm. right yeah. so this, is, yeah. this question of false virtue and there is self-correction in the system yeah yeah, the, yeah. there is an inherent self-correction in the system as well so that even if we went on the wrong road then where we correct it yeah mm -hmm. totally huh it's amazing. So what I'm appreciating, right? Is well, actually, it's like one of the things that just opened, like that just opened up is this way that on one level, we're already always operating in some kind of virtue, mm -hmm. right? I guess that's the hermeneutic sense of, I, I'm already underway with an, with a, an orientation, a towardness, right, a future. And that is a memory, right? That's a, that's a, it's, it's historical, right? Yet that is going to come back towards me. But there's a there, yeah, there's ways where I think just the thing, I think the thing I'm appreciating is that, yeah, it's, but it's, it's also indirect, right? In this way that I can actually think I'm wanting to learn music, but what I'm actually doing, right, is being perfect so that I can be loved or, this, that, or the other thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, that I'm a, just appreciating that dimension of it that just opened up. And it's also the one that's mysterious to me. How do we, how do we think that? Yeah, how, how, and how did we get there too? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll have to watch the tape again. I don't know how that came up. It's, it's the question of like, how is it that you go, how does little, little oh, yeah. song go from yeah. zero about music to right. wanting to want to know yeah, music, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, yeah, there was a recollection mm -hmm. of the, the steps, yeah. That's, you guys it's, have, it's really interesting. 
Have you guys ever seen the um, the arrow on the FedEx sign? No. One second. One second. How many times do you think you've seen the FedEx sign? I don't know. I haven't really looked at it. I bet probably hundreds of thousands of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so let's see the error. <laughs> Um, images. Right. Share screen. See there? Okay, just so now I'll just give you I'll give you a, like a hint. Um, negative space. Oh, the arrow. Uh huh. You just saw it. Yeah. And where is it? Between the E and the X, right? Yes. There it is. Had you ever seen that before? No, I have to say, I also don't see a FedEx. Like, FedEx isn't that common a brand in Austria. Like, I don't see oh. FedEx that much. Okay. I know right. of FedEx because of some of the American movies, but that's all. Oh, I thought you said the error <clears throat> on the FedEx. Oh, the error. The arrow. Yeah, the arrow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Now, oh arrow. yeah. Now I see the arrow. I thought I was looking for the error. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah. See this. Yeah. See this is what's interesting about this sense of like, you know, it's un. You know, for most people, they don't see it. It's, this is fun to do in forces to get the sense about distinction, right, and how it brings the something in the undistinguished background of distinction when it's distinguished brings it into the foreground yeah. right yeah yeah um, and you can only really have thoughts and feelings and relationships with things that are distinct to you to that to relate with right um so this this kind of point from going from not seeing it to seeing it mm -hmm. what's really interesting is all I could do is point to it. If you don't see it, I can point to it, but I can't actually, there's nothing I can do to make you see it. There is yeah. this leap that goes on, right? That happens inside of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think what we're saying in some sense, especially when it comes to something like the music, right? Cause it's so, it's so clearly about like, you know, being able to hear something that you weren't hearing before, right? But how do you go from not hearing it and not hearing that you don't hear it to then hearing, hearing, hearing that you don't hear it to then hearing it, right? Something about that line, virtue has something to do with that. And what's interesting is I can't, I can't do it. All I can do is point to it, but there's something, there's some freedom that you have. And by the way, everything in your life is, is the arrow. It's like anything that you relate with is a figure on the background. On the ground, yeah. Right? Totally. It, I mean, a good example of this was, um, there was a there was a movie about um, there was a movie uh, about it was about a Pepsi Cola bottle I think or Coke bottle where <laughs> where somebody it's it's a it's it's a satire but it's it's, it's a, somebody in the plane threw out a, a a Coke bottle in Africa and it lands 
and you want the whole movie is about what you know it lands in this kind of African tribe, and they have no context for it. So it's Ooh. it goes from being a god to a weapon to all yeah. these different things, right? The, so the movie's all about the the um, they're a pygmy tribe, aren't they? Something like that. Yeah. It was yeah, it was a it was a it was a it wasn't like a documentary. It was it was yeah. it was it was a comedy. Um, yeah. But that really highlights that sense that, you know, in some way there's this, the world, right, is not, is not the stuff. It's, it's the, it, it, it occurs, yeah, right? I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Until it occurs, right, I don't, I can't have a relationship with it. And I can't have a, rela I can't relate to that, I, to that non-relationship, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? So in some way, there's something operating, and, and I think it's, it has to do with virtue. I see. Oh, I see where you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. So primordial. Yeah. And so in the guts of, so in the very guts of our basic function, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. World. And so, but it's super near to us, so it's, it's really difficult to mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. You're kind of asking the million dollar question, kind of what is awakening? I, I see that I see that question on the on the horizon. What is awakening or what is enlightenment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was yeah. this right? How 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 do we come from not realizing mm -hmm. anything to realizing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How yeah. what is insight? That kind yeah. of that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it starts with. You know, when someone looks up at something, there's a, you know, if somebody's at the street corner, you just do an experiment, if you on the, on the street, street corner and just stand there, just look up. Yeah. Right. And pretty soon everyone's going to be looking up because they can't not look up. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's something, there's something yeah. in that relationship, right. That if, if the people in your life are putting their attention on something, yeah. right there's something basically it's saying that at least for that person there's something valuable enough mm -hmm. to pay attention to that and not the infinite amount of everything else mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you paying attention to that and if i look over there and especially if i'm a kid and then all my all the all the big people who are the are the gods right are looking over there and I can't see what they're seeing, right? <laughs> I sense some something's they're valuing something, but it's not an object. It's it's an object to them, but it's not one to me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's something, but then there's that kind of sense of whatever that mis that relationship is that has me know that that's a sign of importance, right? Mm -hmm. In some sense, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. virtue, I think maybe is involved in all that something mm -hmm. like that eh? yeah uh, there's 1217 i yeah. gotta go here we are okay really good really good okay. to do this with you guys so, again so <laughs> so good. see you next week yes yep great bye, bye. bye.